Hey, what's going on guys? It's Hanson. So today we're back with a brand new video and this video is going to be a Python video. Haven't uploaded any of those for a while, but I'm going to show you guys how to get started with logging in with Discord using Python. Okay, so the framework that we're going to be using is called Django. I'm sure some of you guys have probably heard of it before. Django is a very, very popular and very powerful framework. It's an opinionated framework, which means that there are a lot of things that are done underneath the hood for you. And there are certain ways that they want you to do certain things. When I say they, I mean the, the framework itself. It's unlike Flask, where Flask, you have so much uh, flexibility to do whatever you want. The reason why I chose not to use Flask was because Flask is too simple. And I was already learning Django anyways. And Django handles sessions as well as authentication for you. But we're actually going to be implementing our own custom authentication. So anyways, let's go ahead and just show you guys a little demo real quick. So right now you can see that uh, I'm currently on this auth user page. But you can see this is my uh, Discord information right over here. But obviously this doesn't mean much because I could had just uh, sent some random JSON. Well, let me show you this. So right now we're currently logged in. And you can see that... If I show you cookies, okay, these are the cookies. I have a CSRF token and a session ID. Okay, so these two are sent back from within the Django framework. So we're gonna clear them. And now I'm going to close this out. And if I refresh, you're gonna see that it actually says page not found. Okay, so I'm not sure why this is uh, redirecting me to here because it should be redirecting me to a different route. So I'm not entirely sure why, but the reason why this is happening is because we're not authenticated. So I can try to visit that route again but it's not gonna let me visit it because I'm not logged in. Now, if I wanna log in with uh, OAuth2, what I need to do is I need to simply visit OAuth2 Discord. Uh, I think actually it's login. Okay, there we go. So this is going to redirect me to this uh, screen over here. And you can see it says the application wants to access our account. This will allow intellectual to access your username and avatar. But we'll just click on authorize. Okay. And now you can see we're back to this screen over here. And if I open up the network tab or not the network, the application tab, and if I click on cookies, you can see I have a new session ID and a new CSRF token. And if we refresh, I'll be able to access it. And of course, if I log out, I won't be able to. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is set up a new Django app. So I'm actually just going to create a directory called Django OAuth 2 Discord. So I'm going to seed it into this folder now. I'm going to first just set up a virtual environment using pip and shell. So if you aren't using a virtual environment, I would highly recommend you use it. It's very easy to use or you don't need to use a virtual environment. It's up to you. All right. So now I am going to just open up Visual Studio Code and we're going to install a couple of dependencies. One, I'm going to install Django. So pip and install Django. And then you also want to make sure you install the Postgres driver for Python. So we're going to install that. And you also want to make sure you install Postgres database engine onto your system otherwise it's not going to work so pip and install okay there we go okay so while that's installing just simply go over to postgresql.org and just click on download and just select the download for your operating system it's very easy to install i think postgres is actually a lot easier to use than mysql in my opinion it's very simple yeah, it's very easy. Okay, so we have both of our dependencies. We're also going to install another dependency later, but we're not going to worry about that for now. So we're going to use the Django admin command. So you should have this command, okay, especially if you are using a virtual environment. We're going to use a start project command, and I'm going to call this OAuth2 Discord. So this should create a folder, and you can see we have this manage.py file over here. Okay, so I actually I think I do need to cd into OAuth2 Discord. Okay, there we go. So now if I want to run this project now, I can do Python manage pi run server. So this is going to set up our server and you can see that right over here is a starting development server at HTTP and then the port. So if I actually go over to my local host port 8000, you're gonna see this web page over here. It says the install works successfully, congratulations, okay. And that's pretty much uh, it for setting up the project. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply the migrations. So you can see over here it says you have 17 unapplied migrations. So we can just simply do Python manage.py migrate. So we've applied all those migrations. So if I run the project again, okay, let's go over to the page over here. Let's refresh. Okay, that's it. It's really that simple. 
Okay, so by default, Django actually uses SQLite. Now, you can use SQLite if you want to. In fact, you probably can skip this step because if you don't want to use Postgres, you can use SQLite. It's uh, very, very simple. But with Postgres, it's much more recommended to use Postgres or MySQL. Uh, compared to SQLite because SQLite is really good for just starting out. But if you're using this for like a production application, then you should definitely use something like Postgres. So what we need to do is we need to go into our settings. So inside uh, OAuth 2, just let me zoom in a little bit. We're gonna click on settings. Okay, and if we scroll down, okay, we scroll down over here. Let's see, it should be a database part. Right over here, okay. So if you scroll down right over here, you're gonna see this database. Uh, this is a dictionary in Python. If I say object, I really mean dictionary, okay? So we're going to change this from SQLite 3 to PostgreSQL. Okay, and then we're going to get rid of the name part over here. And instead, so this name over here has to be the name of our database. Okay, so I'm actually just going to call this Discord app for now. Or let me call it a Discord app too. Uh, the user, this is just going to be a default user. So I'm just going to use the Postgres user. Password will be my password for... The server and then host local host and then the port so the default port for postgres is 5432 unless if you change it then you have to make sure you specify the correct port okay so that is pretty much it for configuring the database part okay so we need to actually do one more thing so let me go back to here and we're going to do python manage pi and then run server so let's just uh, make sure that there's no issues. Okay, so you're going to see that it says database Discord OAuth 2 does not exist. So we actually do need to create the database right now. So assuming that you guys have already installed uh, Postgres. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, type Postgres. So I'm actually going to do this in my terminal. So if you don't have this command registered, what that means is that the path is not configured. If you uh, hit the start key on your Windows computer and if you type PSQL, it's going to open up this program called SQL Shell PSQL. So this will say the server that you want to connect to. Whoops, server. Why is that? Not okay, there we go. Uh, Postgres is the name of the database. Port. Uh, let's see what else username and then the password. Okay, so I'm logged in right now and you can see that it should have a couple databases right over here. So I'm gonna just create a database. So I'm gonna say create database and we called it, I think what was it, uh, Discord OAuth 2. So Discord OAuth 2. Okay, so if I uh, do slash L again, you're gonna see my database over there. So you can see that everything has successfully uh, worked out. Okay, so if I actually, uh, do this let me connect to the database by doing slash c discord oauth2 and i'm going to list all the tables and you're going to see that uh it seems like we don't have any tables currently okay that's likely because we haven't set up our application yet so let me actually go into the admin it's likely that we don't have an actual admin account okay all right so i'm going to do one more thing i'm going to do python manage pi and then migrate Okay, there we go. So let's run this again and hopefully this should work out fine for us. So we should have, there we go. Okay, so we had to migrate again in order for these tables to show up. So it didn't, ha it didn't show up by default. We needed to migrate again. So if I refresh and if I do admin, so it should bring me to this admin page over here. Now you can actually create a super user through the shell over here so right now i don't have any account right now but if you want to create a user you can it's actually very simple we can use the manage.py script to create the user for us so it's this is the nice thing about django is that it gives you a lot of uh, tools out of the box so for example i'm going to do python manage.py create super user so we're going to say username we'll just leave a anson email address i'm going to skip that password i'll just do one two three four one two three four and we'll just say yes for now. Obviously, it's a test password, so it doesn't really matter for our local host. Okay, so if I try to, if I actually go into my database, and if I do select from auth user, you'll actually see that I have my user over here. And the nice thing about Django is that it actually hashes the password for you. Okay, so you don't have to worry about doing that yourself. Django will do that automatically for you. So let's log in right now. And you can see right over here, Django administration, this is the admin dashboard, okay? We have the users, we have groups. I'm not gonna go in depth on this because we're not really gonna be touching this at all. But yeah, that's pretty much it for 
the whole project setup. So in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up the actual login part. Okay, so I'll see you guys in that video. Peace.